Hi everybody and welcome to Lab 1 DC Resistive Network Analysis. Uh, welcome to my kitchen table and this is the equipment we'll be using. It'll be the, uh, the Hantech scope obviously with the, uh, the probes, the Soul Bay power supply set to 12 volts, the header board and the breadboard that it plugs into. Uh, when you do that make sure that the positive lines up, some jumper cables and the resistors that I'll be using to do this rather simple uh, circuit hookup. I'll be using uh, this circuit right here, relatively simple, just three resistors and two power supplies. You'll notice that the ground is common between the two power supplies. That's, uh, that's mandatory because of the way that the equipment is designed. So whatever circuit you come up with, you will have to use a common ground for both DC power supplies. And at the end of this video, I have some examples of what you can do. All right, so let's get started. First thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to uh, make sure that the header board is set to the jumpers are set to 3.3 volts on one side and 5 volts on the other. Uh, the rails are common and the grounds are common. So on one side you've got 3.3, on the other side you've got 5 volts and a common ground and the power button turns on and supplies power and you've got the green LED. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check the 3.3 volt supply. I'm going to hook up two of the jumper leads and then I'll uh, connect the test probes from the Antec, which is set in DC uh, multimeter mode and we'll measure that voltage as a reference. And there we go. That's about uh, 3.28 volts there. Fluctuation on the third digit is normal. Keep in mind this is a uh, uh, a relatively inexpensive device so the accuracy is not up there with the equipment we would have in the lab. So now I'm going to slide over to the plus 5 volt rail but I can still keep the ground on the other rail because like I said the ground is common between the two power supplies. So again the negative on the negative, the positive on the positive, on the 5 volt rail and we get 4.97 volts. 4.96 so that's not too bad that's pretty good and you can see it actually shows you where to hook up the scope probes on the uh, the display on the hand tech so you know exactly where you're hooking up everything all right so I've also uh, I've also got three resistors that I'll be using uh, and we're going to be checking those out uh, first off, you put the hand tech to resistive mode, which is right beside the DC, and then you short the two leads together to make sure that you get a zero. So I'll take this first resistor, put it across the two leads to get its value. And that's the 1K, or the 1000 ohm resistor, and it's pretty accurate, 1000 ohms. That's actually quite good. All right, I'll try the next resistor. This one, uh, there we go. This one, ah, that looks like it's a 2K resistor. It's coming in at uh, about 190 ohms or 1.990K ohms. And then the third and final resistor that I'll be using, like I said, my circuit is very simple. And this'll be the, uh, if, it, if it, there we go. All right, this is 220 ohms, so 220, 220.3, 0.4, 0.3, let's call it 0.3. All right, so now I have my three resistors. So the, the next thing we want to do is we want to populate the board with, uh, with uh, the circuit that I originally showed. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speed this up a bit so that uh, we're not sitting here just watching me slowly uh, work on this board. Some of the, the pointers I should point out, I, I found that uh, these resistors, the wires were kind of thin and kind of hard. So if you have a pair of needle nose pliers, it'll make inserting the resistance into the breadboard a bit better. So there I've got the resistors all hooked up. Now I'm hooking up the, joining up the circuits. I'm making the three nodes. So as you can, as you can see in the drawing, I have a node A, a node B, and a node C. Uh, node A is hooked up to 5 volts, node B is hooked up to 3.3, and node C is the common. Now, because I need two hands, I took one of the jumpers and I bent it over so that it would, it would snap onto the end of the probe on the negative side. If you can look at it, well, maybe not. 
Okay, anyways, what I did was, is I just, uh, if you look here, you can see it, it seems to be focusing. You just, I just bent it over, and then it snaps onto the, uh, onto the end of the probe where that little notch is in the probe. So this now gives me a free hand, so I can now take the other end of this, uh, this wire, and I can plug it into the breadboard, and this frees up one hand. So there, I've plugged it into the ground side, and now I can use the positive probe to check the other voltages that are on the breadboard using the uh, using the positive probe tip. All right, so here's the actual circuit that I'm going to be using with the uh, with the values that I've recorded. So we can uh, we can now start checking this out with the multimeter, and the first thing we'll do is we'll do the uh, the voltage measurement. All right, here we go. So the, the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that my circuit is complete. And there I'm checking the 3.3 volts. That's working. I'm checking the 5 volts. That's working. So I know I've got, I've got my voltage to my A and my B nodes. Now I want to make sure that I've got uh, power going through the, uh, or I've got the, the circuit completed through the, the 1K resistor or R3. So what I'm doing is I'm disconnecting the 3.3. And there's the 5 volt. If I go across R1, I now measure 4.11, and then that goes through R3 to ground. I measure 0 0.03, that's parasitic. That's probably just a little bit of voltage drop across the jumper wire in the breadboard. So I know that that side of the circuit is good. So now I plug back in the 3.3 and I disconnect the five, and now I check the second path. So there's the 3.3 the volts. It goes through R2, which is the 2K, and I now have 1.98 volts at node C, and again, it goes to ground. So I know that my circuit is complete. I don't have any intermittence in my circuit, and there I've hooked up the 5 volts again. So now if I, uh, if I measure the, the node C, you'll see I'm measuring 3.994993 volts, something like that. So that's uh, it's bouncing a little bit, but that's to be expected with a with a meter of this caliber. But still, I mean, it's relatively accurate. It's at least two digits of accuracy, and this is the multi-sim function, where you can see multi-sim wise putting in the voltages and the resistant values that I measured. I'm coming up with a voltage of 4.014 volts. So that's actually pretty good, uh, considering the caliber of the equipment that we're using. And again, like I said, this is a very simplistic circuit. And again, you'll notice that I have a common ground. All right. So now what we need to do is we need to measure the, the current in the same pass. We need to know the current at nodes A, node B, and node C. So the, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to switch the multimeter over to current mode. So you go to the next menu and there's DC milliamps. There we go. And you'll see on the top of the display it shows you you need to move your, your probes over. The plus probe now has to go over to the milliamp input. So you unplug it and you plug it back in there. And now we're going to be measuring milliamps. Now keep in mind that when you're measuring current you need to be in series with uh, with the uh, the path so if i uh, if i disconnect the the ground uh, coming off uh, the r2 and i measure or sorry r3 i should say the 1k and if i measure the current there at that point that's about four milliamps so that's it that's it node c and it doesn't matter whether i measure that before or after the 1k resistor the current flowing through that resistor is the same on both sides so now i'm going to measure node b which is the 3.3 volt power supply so i'm going to disconnect the 3.3 volt wire actually i didn't have to do that but okay so i'm going to hook the the ground side of the meter to the resistor and then I'm going to take the 3.3 volts and hook that up to the positive side. And there I have negative 0.321 milliamps, and that negative is indeed correct. I'll hook that back up. And now I'll check the node A current. And, uh, whoops, I got the probes backwards there. Hang on. Yeah, yeah, the probes are backwards. That, my bad. Okay, so I'll put this back into the 5 volt rail take my ground of the uh, the 
amp meter now and hook up the positive. There we go. So I'm now measuring 4.43 milliamps at node A. So that completes the the testing of my small circuit, and here's the uh, the multi sim uh, description. You can see here the uh, the currents. Uh, again, please note that the one meter has the polarities reversed. And again, you'll see that I have a common ground, and you'll see that I have all the currents that the multi sim program came up with. And indeed, there is a negative current at node B. All right, so here's some of the uh, the other circuits that we have. These are circuits from, I believe, 2019. Uh, the circuits that you can probably emulate because you'll come up with your own design. Um, configuration 3, 4, and 5 are all doable with what you have. Again, keep in mind you have a common ground. Uh, so you have to make the circuits from that, and I expect you to do more than just the three resistors. So the Elego kit comes with various resistor values that you can put in series and parallel combinations to give you some uh, unique values that you can incorporate into your circuit. And again, keep in mind that the breakout board does have a common ground, so whatever power supplies you do use, they will be on a common ground circuit. Uh, so that's it for lab one.